What's up? Fight is over. Predicted just a couple of rounds over. Deontay Wilder knocks out King Congo Cheese in super duper, uber, devastating fashion. I'm headed downstairs because I'm trying to, trying to get some more. But De Deontay is still undefeated. You know what I'm saying? 42 and 0. 41 knockout. Justin Austin was good, man. You know the plan. Stalled Ortiz out till he got tired. Excuse me. Please. Thank you. Stalled him out till he got tired. And the rest is history. Brutal knockout. Brutal knockout. I'm about to go down here where the, you know, the out entrance is. Try to catch some celebrities or whatever. What y'all think about the fight? There go Jerry Cooney right there. You doing, Mr. Cooney? Have a good one. All right, champ. There go um my um. Sam Cassell right there. That ain't much taller than I thought. Wow. Salute, Sam. Damn, I never knew he was that tall, man. You know what that? How you like that fight? It end the way you want? <laughs> yeah. That was Booker T. World Combat Sports got to give you exclusive. You know, the walkout. Try to catch all the celebrities. There goes Zab Judah. You know. I'm about, to, I'm about to get right up here. You know, so I can get it. You guys have a great evening. Up the escalator. You guys have See all the dimes walking out. You know what I'm saying? Up the escalator. Only World Combat Sports can give you that. Subscribe to the channel. You know what I'm saying? Up the Subscribe to the channel. Folks. Follow on IG. Who else gonna give you the Perky trenches? Drive. Who else gonna give you the meat of the trenches after the after the yes, fight, Dio. post fight? I don't know where that is, man. Is this for? What everybody thought about the fight? Holla at me. Y'all peeking in the window? Holla at me. What you thought about the fight? Yes, Champ got one punch knockout power. Oh, Bears, I did right. Oh, Bears, I did right. You know who that is? The seal of the escort. <laughs> the seal, my left, your right. Parking garage.
Everybody fouling out the back. Hope to catch some celebs. They go, they go, um, Miguel Flores right there. Hey, good fight, Miguel. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. In my shot, in my shot. Here go um, Chris Eubank Sr. right here. That was Chris Eubank Sr. Junior is here too. Mike Tyson is. I hope I catch Mike Tyson walking back out here. Yeah, here go, um, here go Junior. Junior's on his way out. He's right there in the gray top. You guys alright? You know, people still in there chatting. They're gonna call Frampton right there. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. Told you. The seal of the Escort! The seal of That's Chris Hughes Banks Jr. You know what it is. World Combat Sports giving you the exclusive post fight exit out the back, the VIP entrance. It'll call Frampton right there. What's going on? Andrew Stokes promotion in the building. Media never stops. You know, you lead a fight, they go Andre the Rail. He's on his way out. Up the escalator, folks. Get sealed. What you think of the knockout, Andre? Andre the Rail, one thing he don't do is talk to media. That's like the third or fourth time since I've been here. They asked him for a question. He don't say nothing. My feelings ain't hurt. My feelings ain't hurt, you heard? There go Dennis Douglas right there. Know you're boxing. Dennis, man. What's going on? What you think of the fight, Dennis? That shit, you know, that shit's scary, bro. Like, you gotta fight him perfect for 12 rounds. Or you gonna lose, like, because Ortiz's doing his thing. But one shot changed everything, bro. Like, that shit's crazy. One punch knockout. You gotta fight perfect for 12 rounds. Dennis, after seeing that type of knockout, does anybody got a chance versus Wilder right now? Does Fury oh, got a chance in the rematch whatsoever? Oh, Radio Raheem. Nobody, nobody beats Wilder right now. Am I, am I personal? I thought Ortiz was going to say, I, bet, I put money on Ortiz, no bullshit. I put money on Ortiz today. Do you, you know, believe? Coach okay. Wade, I'm like, oh, Wade, Wade going to get him right. And he look good, but that equalizer is different, man. Do you believe he was up in the fight? Ortiz Ortiz is up, man. I'm like, I'm going to see you, bro. Hey, All right, chap. Nice to meet you, man. I'm going home to watch Bud, man. Okay, I see you. Where's the Okay, here go Bobby Jack. I don't know. Those are the models knocked out. And the connection. He proved it, right? Uh, did you have OTs winning every round? Yeah, I think he lost one or two. Do you look forward to facing Wilder sometime in the yeah, future? I hope so, man. <laughs> he said I'll play the fight with OTs next. I ain't been able to call out, but uh, I can't wait for next year. You know, I'll fight everybody. I'll get a title shot. You want to make it to be on the Wilder Fury card, though, aren't you? Uh, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm totally scheduled to fight towards in February, early March. So, uh, did you expect the stoppage to come for Deontay tonight? He said he's two seconds, and that's what happened, man. Uh, but it feels looking great. Is that, are you, is are you good else in the world who has so much power in a single shot? Uh, I don't know. Apart from Adam Kalnacki. I throw a lot of, I a whole, uh, a lot do, of value. How right? would you prepare for the Bronze Bomber, and how would you prepare for him? Uh, fight him, box him on the outside? I mean, you guys know how I fight. I come forward. I throw a lot of shots. Where I think Ortiz is a little bit too conservative. With me, I'll be nonstop action, nonstop punches. And I wonder how uh, Wilder would uh, cook with that. Was this uh, what you were thinking was going to happen—a knockout—or what were your thoughts prior to this fight? 
Uh, I mean, they are both very conservative. I think uh, like, oh, Wilder was uh, sizing him up, and he caught with a good one too. Uh, were you expecting like under seven, over seven? Yeah, over I was seven. under seven. I think we, uh, the pregame show, we said uh, under seven. Uh, that was close. All right, and when can we expect you back in the ring? Uh, Excuse me, uh, I'm going to get sad. Get sealed! Yeah, money team, man. Yeah. 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 We got you right in the interview, Scott, straight away! Zach, yeah, what's your assessment on the fight? Yo, Sam? man, he got busy, man. He got busy. Did you he have the world and he had the champ of the world by knockouts? You know what I mean? It's always a pleasure, champ. What's up? Brooklyn, what's up? Yeah. Man. Thanks for the interview, Andy. Up until that point, what was your thoughts on the bout? Up until this point of a stoppage, how, how, did, how did you see the fight going? This tees up that rematch with Tyson Fury as well. What are your thoughts on that? I'm worried about me, man. Talk about your career, Charles. So where is that going to be? That's going to be out in California. All right. Do you know your opponent? Well, it's supposed to be Dominic Brazil, but um, he turned the fight down last minute. So All right. we got we to gotta find a little replacement and then we'll be getting something big in February. How are you looking to get back into world title contention, Charles? How, how far away from that do you feel you are? I'm right there. Um, I think I'm other, the IBF and other events broken out. But, you know, other guys will be fighting for it and I'll be getting it. Shot. So I'm going to get a title shot. Finally, before I let you shoot off, Ruiz Joshua 2, what are your thoughts on that rematch in a couple weeks? Charles, thank you. Cheers. Salute, Charles. Appreciate it. Hey, Charles. This is the post fight from World Combat Sports, man. I'm at the back entrance at the MGM Grand, waiting for some more boxers, celebrities to come out and get their post fight reaction. Um, you know, it's been a lot. It's been it's been quality um, link ups so far. So we're trying to see how the mood is with some of the, um, the stragglers that's in there, probably chatting it up about the knockout or what have you. But she had a lot. There go Brandon Figueroa. Right 
Right, let's take a roar. How are you feeling after, uh, you know, a uh, hard fight tonight? Um, How do you assess your opponent um, performance, Brandon? Uh, I, I I think it was pretty good. Uh, you know, he came to fight. He put he put the pressure. He tagged me a lot. Um, he didn't give up. I did hurt him a, a couple times with the body, but like I said, you know, the, those four, those four pounds did make a difference. Do you want to run it back? And if so, how soon? I, I, I mean, I don't think to give him an opportunity and for him to come five pounds over. I don't think he deserves the rematch. I think you know, uh, I I think I did enough to beat him. Uh, I don't think he would come again at I don't think he would last. Like, it was so, said that you wasn't going to take the fight. What changed after the after the over, you know, he was overweight. It was said that you wasn't going to take the fight. I mean, to let a fight like this, this a big opportunity to, to go down the drain, you know, just for him not being a professional. Uh, you know, I wasn't going to let that slide, you know. We never sent over fights. Uh, we took, I took the fight, but, uh, you know, um, the good thing is that I came out healthy. Are you planning on still fight Stephen Colton? Yeah, of course. You know, uh, after this, I'm going to get back to get back to work. Uh, then we talk to my manager on him and my team, and uh, next fight. Your next fight. Anybody you have in mind for your next opponent? I'm not sure right now. All right. Congrats on the fight, there, Brandon Figueroa. Salute to him. I go Mauricio Suleiman over there, WBC president. Thank you so much, guys. Jay Love right there. What's going on, Jay Love? All right, Sam. Salute. Talk to my man Stitch. I was gonna get Stitch as his as his assessment of the fight. You know. Saran. Hey, quick Take reaction to the fight. How you doing, sir? I'm all right, good. good all right. What's your reaction to the fight? I, I loved it, man. You know, beautiful right hand. I always said, you know, Pat Wilder. I like to miss him. I think he saw, he saw him missing one in progress today. He had rather the target. It, it seemed like he took his time. He was a bit more patient. But yet, he had that reserve power anyway. He is a one-punch knockout artist. That's what he is. Yeah, very simple. So, so what's next for you? You you on your way to a plane and, you know, headed to your next no, fight? No, next year I have here in Vegas. I'm here today and uh, here next week. And All right. I was supposed to go to Saudi Arabia with Jesse Marcus. They changed his date. So, you know, end up uh, with Badu Jack in Atlanta on the 28th and then we're straight to uh, Tokyo with Kazuto Ayoka. Finish okay. Finish New Year's Eve up there. All right, see you in Atlanta. I, you know, that's my hometown, my, right. my backyard. So, definitely shout out to legendary. Jacob Sister Rand, always a pleasure. Yeah, man,
They go forward, Mayweather Sr. Go ahead, y'all fighters on stage. You ain't, on, you ain't watching them. How you doing, Sr.? Come on, Mr. Mayweather. How you doing, Sr.? I got one on stage. You'll see it. There it is. There it is. <laughs> that was Floyd Mayweather singing. Say that Floyd Daddy. He ain't talk shit forever. <laughs> World Combat Sports, post-fight reaction, crowd exiting, the MGM brand, Deontay Wilder wins 42-0, 41 knockouts, still the baddest heavyweight in the business, the hardest hitting boxer in the sport today, one punch knockout, period. There's no hesitation on that. I know a lot of y'all were saying, oh well, he's behind, you'll have to understand, methodically, patience. Ortiz start the tire, and guess what happened? He couldn't keep that same energy, that same pressure that he had in the beginning of the fight, and he ended up getting knocked out again. Again. They wasn't even out during press week. He was up in the room the entire time. What? Why well, you guys need to head up to the press rooms? The boss said the Oh, okay, okay. No press. doubt. No doubt. I head up there. About to head up to the press room. Post fight. Hopefully, hopefully to you know see the champ up there. Hopefully Luis Ortiz stop through. If he if he's coherent. You know, so I'm going up the press room. Thank you. Um, they, they're about to do a post-fight presser. So, hopefully, Deontay show up, you know, Luis Ortiz. Taking a seat for this one. <laughs> Most of the seats are taken up front. I'm gonna go over here and sit on the end. Excuse me. 
Add to their houses. I want to make with a guerrilla. People, that was what you call a um, Rambo Media Scrum. You know, leaving the fight and then headed to another place, you know, where everybody's going to be exiting. So, hopefully, the supporters appreciate it. Pass the word, share the video. Pretty good Facebook Live, if you ask me, you know, especially post fight, seeing some the celebrities, you know, Annie Konecki. Charles Martin, Bobby Jack stopped through Andre the Rail, you know. Brandon Figueroa retained his title. Jacob Sister ran, gave his his feedback, you know. Awesome fight card. Deontay Wilder was a, a lot more patient this time. You know Luis was going to have that energy ahead of time. You know, in the early rounds, he was going to have that energy. And he did. Ortiz was very active. He was um, precise. He was placing his punches well. Making good decisions in there to counter over the top of Deontay's jab sometime. And it was working out for him. But when he started to tire, that's when it came down to a dilemma for Luis Ortiz. Either you back up or, you know, you get with inside Deontay's range. And he, he decided to stay right at range, you know, right outside the range of Deontay and try to box him. Knowing that he was losing strength, he was fatiguing a bit, and he got caught with a straight right, man. God damn. Jesus, that right hand is just absolutely stupid. It is seriously juvenile, belligerent in every aspect when you see it in person. The way he dropped Luis Ortiz is somewhat similar how he dropped Dominique Brazil. There go the walkout. Y'all didn't see the walkout. That walkout was absolutely absurd that's one of the best walkout battle guards I've seen in a while I mean he outdid his last one So we're piling in this, um, the post-fight media room. I'm not sure what fighters are going to come in here. I'm not sure if the champ is going to come in here or Luis Ortiz. I would be highly surprised if Ortiz made it to the post-fight conference. Because he's been absent a UA from the media the entire week, man. Like, he came out for the presser, and that was it. But besides that, he wasn't really active in the casino. There wasn't no way to actually get in contact. You know, just with him walking around, mobile. But Deontay Wilder, man. I mean, look look how he, he hit Ortiz. He jarred his cranial placement. His brain was discombobulated from the outside in, and then it was just a catastrophe from there. Brain matter, plasma, and everything else that goes along with it imploded. Ortiz lost consciousness and couldn't recover. That's how freaking hard you don't take a while to hit, man. God damn. There goes Sean Porter. I seen him up top today. They're gonna end up outlawing that right hand for real. They're gonna have him coming there with one hand. He gonna come in there looking like Aoki did when he fought Muhammad Ali. They're gonna say Deontay, you know, 
appreciate everybody. For I'm just making light of the situation. I appreciate everybody for stopping through World Combat Sports Media. I did see Abner Mares. He hasn't quite made it in here yet. You know what? I'm going back over. Let me see. No, I'm going to stay right here. I'm going to keep my seat. Because from over there, you're not going to be able to actually get a full view of the post-fight presser. Marcus Johnson, I hear you, man. I hear you. You know, you know what's crazy though is watching Andy Konaki right on TV, right? And all along thinking he he's a bit short or whatever until I'm standing in front of him, and I was like, damn, this dude got size on him. This dude has size and height on him. He, of course, he's shorter than the bronze bomber, but I'm just saying, like. I truly thought that dude was much, much shorter than being Charles Martin. He's about 6'5", six, 6'6". Six, six. These heavyweights ain't no joke in boxing. Seriously. God damn. See, Mike McGee said that Ruiz Wilder would be a good fight. They say a lot of people would be a good fight with Wilder. They say Ortiz would be a good fight. And the fight was good. You know, actively advantage, you know, Ortiz was getting off. And, and, you know, you have to understand the process of the sweet science, man. Just because the first half of the fight is benefiting one fighter, you have to assess what is actually going on. Like, assess Ortiz's age, you know. Assess him putting out all that energy in the first half of the fight and what he's going to have for the back end. And, and you know, it seemed like Deontay Wilder was very patient, keeping it holstered until the right time. He started fainting and start, you know, once again dialing in Luis Ortiz timing. One shot knockout power. I don't know why people, you know, it's going to be people tomorrow saying that he was losing the entire fight. He was losing the entire fight. Check this out, though. What is the outcome and end state that transpired? Is it something that you haven't seen before, something that you isn't used to? I mean, the same shit happens all the time, and you have to start accrediting Deontay Wilder's ring IQ. You have to. Because for a person to be that patient and allow Ortiz to land, there has to be a fight plan, a strategy. And that strategy was just what you've seen. You know, Ortiz started to slow, tire, fatigue. He wasn't as active. And when you stay within range and you're not active in front of Deontay Wilder, he's going to blitz you. He's going to pop the cap on that missile. That's all I'm saying. You know, Chris Eubanks came out. Both senior and junior, Floyd Mayweather senior. You know, there's a lot of people. Be sure you share this live, man. It's been an outstanding fight weekend. Tiresome, seriously. But, um, I appreciate y'all's support. Hopefully, y'all pass the word. You know what I'm saying? Pass the word. Get it out there. I try to give y'all the exclusive before the fight and after the fight. Hopefully y'all appreciate it. That's all I can say. Let me see who is this walking in here. I thought that was um Leo Santa Cruz, but it isn't. That's the UK media. Well, that's somebody over there getting the interview.
Oh, um, I believe that's um, I forgot his name. So from what I'm saying, they may allow certain people to do one-on-one -on -one interviews once they do enter the studio. The only problem I see with Reeves facing Deontay Wilder is if you have to understand that a lot of people believe, um, a lot of people assess his knockout of Anthony Joshua to be something of an absolute. Um, abnormal, you know, punching power coming from Andy Ruiz, you know. They had like, it's a, a, it's a phenomenal difference, you know, because he went in there and stopped Anthony Joshua, who was chinny to begin with. We already knew Anthony Joshua's chin was suspect. We knew that already. What Andy Ruiz has just exposed him by pressuring Andy, Anthony Joshua, who was throwing one, two, and then... Um, returning a six-punch combination. He disrupted everything Anthony Joshua had in the ring, and therefore he was able to get through. And that shot that left over the top, that overhand left that that um, shocked Anthony Joshua, disrupted his rhythm, his equilibrium. And then he just kept up the pace. He kept up the energy, man. It was easy for him to do that with Anthony Joshua. Easy. Klitschko did it. Joseph Parker did it. Carlos Takam in pockets did it. You know what I'm saying? Anthony Joshua always said it was nothing special. A more active fighter whose technique was much better than Anthony Joshua. You know what I'm saying? I mean, period. But we're waiting on the post-fight presser to come in here. Once you enter the studio protocol, you know, you see interviews. It's not like a, a all-out media scrum out there, you know. It's if, if these media outlets that's internal to the studio get the interview first, you just leave it at leave it at B. But if you out in the jungle, out in the Serengeti outdoor, out, outside these doors, it's all for one and one for all. You get in where you fit in. You snooze, you lose. That's just about the protocol right there when you're outside. I'm just curious who, who's going to come in this presser. I hope Deontay Wilder will come in here so I can ask him a question. I just want to ask him one question. Should his right hand be outlawed? Dominique Robertson here, what's good? Salute to you. I'm ready. You know, I'm ready for, I was. I, I watched the fight like you, you did at home. I'm ready for all the, you know, the critics. You, 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 can, you can say what you say. You, you have the right to your OP. You know, I ain't tripping. But when you come over here and talk about, you know, he, he was winning every round and all that, you, you have to look at the process and the strategy that was going on there. It worked out perfectly, because King Kong, tired, he came in in better shape, but he couldn't maintain the pace. He couldn't drop Deontay Wilder. And what is that saying? You, you have to be prepared for what's about to come. And getting complacent with landing those shots, getting comfortable right inside, right outside Deontay's distance. You know what I'm saying? Just, just very comfortable. Throwing that jab, doubling up on that jab, you know, going to the body periodically, up top. You know, Luis Ortiz was comfortable. He got comfortable. And when he got hit with that right hand, 
He didn't even see it freaking coming. He couldn't even get a, a re a red receipt on that one. That 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 shit came down the pipe so quick. It wasn't even on the radar. That shit hit King Kong Ortiz flush. I mean, listen, that right hand that he landed on Ortiz tonight was worse than the first fight. That right hand was what he's been working on in the gym. It was just as devastating as the Dominique Brazil knockout, period. It was just as devastating. The Wall Street on both of them is just as equal. They dropped just the same. But what I would accredit Dominique Brazil, the younger fighter, he did make it back up to his souls and stumble back to the ropes. King Kong Ortiz wasn't able to gather himself, recover any of that. Nothing. So I see um, Jacob's sister Rand is in here. So I see some media getting up. You know what? I'm gonna stop talking. I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna go over here so we can we can we can you know, at least get on the tail end of some stuff. You know? Why not? So, so do you assess that knockout of King Kong Ortiz tonight much worse than the Dominic Brazil? Or well, they pretty much equal? Well, the thing I liked about this one tonight, he showed patience. Man. Correct. Yeah. And, and, you know, people around, some people around, they were like, man, you know, he's losing this mm -hmm. fight. Mm -hmm. Like what he's understanding, he's processing what's going on in front of him, getting his timing, and mm -hmm. distance, and so forth. Yep. And man, I knew it was just going to be a matter Before of the time. smoke. Before he dropped that bomb, yeah, I, I knew it, man. It was, it was it brutal, was man. It was brutal. Oh, it, was it was brutal. And you know, Straight up, it was brutal. And he really didn't get full extension. Yeah. On it, you know what I'm saying? Call him in route. It, it was devastating. Devastating. Matter of fact, I was telling these guys, it was similar to how he folded stuff up with his legs up under. Yeah. It, it, it was because his legs momentarily were under. Yeah. But, uh, oh, it was devastating. And Stavernes was through the gloves. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Man, that man's power. Luis Ortiz caught that, all of it. All of it. Unmolested, all of all it. Of it. Man, that's his power. Power was just sick, man. I was watching him spar in camp, man, and he was working on, on, on his jab. A lot of people, you know, he did, um, he sparred three heavyweights his last uh, fight camp. I'm telling you, man, they, they working on the same thing they was working on, the fundamentals, that, that combination, man. I, I just think when he fights Fury, this whole approach, mm -hmm. it's going to be different. Yeah. You know, I don't think we'll see him head him as much. You know, I think we'll see him go to We didn't see him tonight. Yeah. He's very meticulous and patient and, and waiting on the right opportunity. As soon as he saw it, man, he promised. I'm going to go over here and get some media. Yeah. I'll All right, be back over here. Yep. All right. I'm gonna go over here, see what I can get into. No. Here goes Jesse Vargas over here. I'm gonna tag on to this. I'm 
He seems a bit more excited than Justin Vargas. Watching something in theater where you don't know what's going to happen, you don't know who's going to win until the end. How did it work? He's like, he got sculpted. The man can move. He's big. He was able to time, or basically time while he so quickly throw him off. Did you, you know that you were coming and jumping out of your seat? You knew. You just you knew. Yeah, I jumped over three rows just to see the fight. I jumped over three rows when Deontay uh, Wilder hit uh, uh, Ortiz with that one unbelievable shot. All right, well, okay. What's next for you? I know that uh, you just had a great win on the California Lumber Park. What is next for you? And you know what I'm going to ask you to do after? What's next for me? the Flair, the most you know who that is, right? That's Mr. Edmund, Oprah's, Oprah's um, confidant. I haven't seen him in a while out in public. There go Jim Gray. There go Jim Gray. Definitely. I'll let him pass. He's not the best interviewer, especially he don't know you. But this is World Combat Sports post-fight reaction in, in the studio at the MGM Grand. For you to support this fight fans, shout the vid, you know, support World Combat Sports in the trenches. Like the video, appreciate what's going on, you know, trying to give y'all everything, possibly drain the remaining portion of this fight. You know what I'm saying? It's over. Just trying to give you some more press before all the fighters come in. I'm, I'm definitely getting this right here. What do you rank Deontay Wilder with the greatest heavyweight box? What do you rank him right now? You know, as far as well, I, 
I think Tyson was the greatest. Tyson. Thank you. Does Ms. Oprah Winfrey like boxing with you? Uh, she has. Who's her favorite fighter? I want Tyson. Which are from you know comic space fighter. So maybe boxing. So if you look at the weight weights, you know, you don't realize that she's far away. So she's. She's pretty competitive. And very intense. So, was she a better writer than that? It's very intense. 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 All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to begin the post-fight press conference here in Las Vegas at the NHL Grand. What a night of action. A tremendous finish in our main event with Deontay Wilder knocking out Luis Ortiz in their rematch. But our co-main event had some history behind it as this man becomes the fifth fighter from Mexico to win a world title in four divisions, <laughs> capturing the Southwest Championship by unanimous decision with an excellent performance over Miguel Flores. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the new 130-pound champion, Perez Leo, and Famoso Terremoto Santa Cruz. Leo is joined by his father, Jose Santa Cruz, as well, a champion in four divisions. Leo, if you have opening thoughts, congratulations on the victory. What a performance as you made history here tonight. I'm very happy uh, that I'm a fourth division world champion. I'm excited. Uh, it's something since I was small that I wanted to accomplish, and I never imagined I was going to be a fourth division world champion. I didn't. I'm not that happy with my performance. I, I don't think 